Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the very first lecture of uh, this detailed Selenium course. So uh, before we get started uh, with uh, the actual Selenium uh, training, the very first thing that comes is what exactly is Selenium? So what is Selenium? If I talk about uh, like I have asked this question to many students and most of the time uh, the answer that I got is that uh, it's an automation testing tool and it's used for web-based application testing, right. So uh, web-based application testing as in uh, what all sort of testing uh, that we do manually or using automation, it's like we perform testing on web-based applications we perform testing on desktop based applications we perform testing on database applications we perform testing on mobile applications then we also perform testing on uh, web services that is rest or soap so majorly rest is used in the market right so these are the areas where we uh, mostly perform testing we do manual testing as well as uh, we do automation uh, on these applications, right? So if I talk about uh, web-based testing, we are, let's say we are saying that Selenium is only for web-based applications testing. So it, it's an automation testing tool for web-based application testing only, right? So this is only for web-based. Now, uh, there are other many tools available in the market for uh, uh, web-based testing as in not just Selenium, uh, there's a biggest competitor of Selenium which I believe everyone knows that uh, QTP or UFT, right? So QTP uh, which is known as UFT these days, so it's, I mean, uh, prior to Selenium the demand of QTP was like anything in the market, right? There, there were a lot of openings, many companies were working on QTP uh, for their automation stuff uh, and uh, slowly and steadily these days we have seen that uh, many organizations are leaving QTP and moving towards Selenium, right? And now 90% of the market, if we compare it with Selenium and QTP, 90% of the market is working on Selenium. Many, many big organizations are working on Selenium. It's not just like small scale companies are working on Selenium. There are CMM five level companies, Google, Adobe, Facebook, many big brands are actually working with Selenium, right? They are, they are using Selenium for their automation testing, right? So uh, QTP, it supports web-based and it supports uh, desktop-based as well. Whereas Selenium, it supports only and only web-based. Then why the market is moving towards Selenium? Why not QTP? Why not RFT? There are n number of other automation tools in the market. So the, the, the best part of Selenium is that there is no license required to work on Selenium. It's completely open source, right? Open source means that you need not to pay even a single penny to use Selenium. Whereas for QTP, there is a very expensive license. Uh, it costs somewhere around 2,000 to 4,000 USD per user. And if a company is going for a concurrent license of let's say 50 users, it will gonna cost a huge amount. Whereas the same functionality Selenium provides absolutely free of cost. Just that Selenium does not support desktop. Selenium can only automate web-based applications. But if we talk about current market, 75% of the projects are currently accessed via URL. Yes, because it, it's a time of cloud computing. So everything is on web, right? So Selenium is one of the best automation tool for web-based application testing, right? Not just this, not just open source. There are many other open source automation tools available for web-based testing, like what is there, what it is there, uh, open ST is there, n number of open source automation tools are there. But why Selenium is very popular? So that is what uh, we will be understanding in next few lectures, right? Then uh, for database application testing, uh, like uh, there are many vendors like uh, SQL, MySQL, Oracle, right? You can uh, perform queries uh, through this, big data is there, Hadoop, uh, is there right 
you can write uh, SQL queries, you can validate the data manually. Then for mobile applications as well, there are tools like Robotium is there, Calabash is there, then something called as Appium. Now what Appium is, uh, we may gonna discuss about this thing as well. And same way for web services testing, there are tools like Postman is there, SOAP UI is there, right? N number of uh, tools available to perform uh, manual or automation testing on web services as well. But Selenium, it only comes at web-based level. Still, the market of Selenium is very huge, right? So what exactly is the reason behind it? Before that, we'll first talk about a little bit features of Selenium. So if you are familiar, uh, if you have uh, gone through some theory over the internet, about Selenium, some brief history over Selenium. So Selenium, uh, it actually supports multiple browser. So multiple browser support is there. Multiple browser as in, since Selenium is only for web-based testing, so things will be executed on web only, right? So all major browsers in the world are supported by Selenium. So be it IE, be it Chrome, be it Firefox, be it Safari, be it Opera, all major browsers are supported by Selenium. Along with the browsers, Selenium support multiple languages as well. Languages as in, uh, you can use Selenium with Java, with C Sharp, with Ruby, with Python, with PHP, with JavaScript, all major languages in the world are supported by Selenium. Not just scripting languages, purely object oriented languages are also supported right if we if we talk about qtp uh, like qtp as a competitor of selenium right so qtp which language qtp supports we know that qtp majorly supports vb script so that's just a scripting language not purely object oriented and if we talk about vb script then vb script is a microsoft component right so VB script is only and only supported on Windows. So it means if you are working on QTP, your automation is restricted only and only on Windows. Right, whereas if we talk about current market, there are many people who are working on a MacBook or working on Linux machines and different, different operating system. But if we talk about QTP, it only works on Windows. So at times the client requirement is uh, like the client want to test his application on all major platforms. He wants that his product should work fine on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, on iOS, on Solaris, on, on Android, all major operating systems sh should support uh, his project, right? So whereas if we talk about QTP, uh, we can only test it on uh, uh, like Windows. We cannot perform testing on different platform. But on the other end, if we talk about Selenium, we have just seen that how many languages Selenium supports, right? If we just talk about Java, Java is one of the powerful language, one of the open source language. And uh, if you have ever installed Java, the very first message you're gonna see that is three billion devices runs on Java. So be it Linux, be it uh, Solaris, be it Android, iOS, any operating system you name, it is supported by Java. And if you are writing your Selenium code or Selenium automation scripts in Java, you can execute that code in any operating system that you want and that too completely free of cost, right? So this is another thing about Selenium is that it has got a multi OS as in the multi platform support. You can execute your code on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, on Solaris, on iOS, on Android. All major operating systems are supported by Selenium. Right, this is one of the best thing to use Selenium. Right, now if I'm talking about language support, language support doesn't mean that uh, like if my application is built up in Java, then I'm gonna automate things using Selenium with Java. 
then again if my application is built up in uh, python then i'll learn selenium with python and if it is ruby then i'll learn selenium with ruby it doesn't means that uh, like uh, whichever language is supported by selenium if you are uh, automating your website which is built up in java you'll be learning selenium with java from scratch and then if it is built up in python you'll be learning selenium with python from scratch so selenium is not language dependent your automation is not not language dependent language support means that initially selenium was started in java right if i talk about uh, the brief history of this project then uh, the very first thing we should be looking at is the main website of selenium so that is seleniumhq.org so this is the main website of selenium that is selenium headquarters so what is selenium selenium automates browsers that's it selenium is only and only for web based testing anything and everything available on a web can be easily automated using selenium right if i go to this documentation part this is very important to know the brief history of this project so like if i talk about uh, qtp initially qtp was owned by a company called as mercury so mercury came up with qtp in the market and then later on uh, hp has taken over it same way if i talk about selenium so selenium uh, first came into the life in 2004 by a developer called as jason huggins who used to work at thoughtworks so he is the one who actually designed this project and initially he started selenium as a java project so if you go to this link this brief history you're going to see that selenium first came into the life in 2004 by a developer jason huggins at thoughtworks so in order to automate his daily routine task he has created a small java project that project went up to such an extent they thought of giving it some name and they came up with a name called as selenium now why only selenium there is a history behind this thing as well the, there is a history behind the name as well so if we talk about uh, like we we talked about qtp qtp was initially a product of mercury so in 2004 uh, like mercury was actually the owner of qtp now if we talk about mercury in general terms what exactly is mercury so i believe most of you have seen mercury where uh, it's it's in thermometer right so mercury is basically a poisonous element right if someone intakes mercury then he'll die so if someone intakes mercury we give him an antidote that is what selenium is so selenium is basically an antidote to mercury selenium kills mercury that is the reason they have given this project name as selenium so to end the market of qtp mercury and up to such an extent they are successful as well not just because of the cost there are n number of factors behind it and that is what we are going to study in this course right so the very first two component that they came up in the market is selenium rc and selenium ide this was launched with the version selenium 1.0 so selenium 1.0 was the combination of id plus rc now how many versions of their uh, how many versions of selenium are there after 1.0 2.0 came into the market after 2.0 selenium 3.0 came into the market so current version of selenium if you look over here if you go to this download the current version of selenium is 3.14.59 so this is the current version in which 3 is the release number 141.59 is the build number so what is selenium 3 selenium 3 is nothing it is web driver only right if you if you talk about there are four components of selenium one is id one is rc one is web driver 
and one is grid. So these are the four components of Selenium in which one was IDRC, 3.0 is web driver and 2.0 was also web driver. Plus there was some support of RC as well. So you can say 2.0 was a combination of web driver plus RC. And the last version of this release was 2.53.1. So this was the last version of this release. And then 3.0 came into the market. So 3.0 is only and only web driver plus W3C specifications implemented. So W3C is basically World Wide Web Consortium, right? There are some guidelines. We'll be talking about this thing as well. So this, these are some of the components of Selenium. So we're going to have uh, a detailed discussion around all these components in the, in the course, but our major focus will be on Selenium 3 because that is what uh, the market is currently working on, right? RC is already gone from the market. IDE is still there. And plus there is one component that is grid one, which was uh, actually there uh, with all the versions of Selenium. So grid two was there with uh, Selenium two, grid three is there with Selenium three. Now what grid is, this is one of the unique component which is actually used for parallel execution uh, of test cases uh, on a remote browsers or remote uh, machines like remote operating system. So what is grid? We'll be having a detailed discussion around this as well, right? But initially, I mean, the major part of Selenium is uh, like when it was initially started, it was started as a Java project. Now, we were talking about multi-language support. So multi-language support means that initially when Selenium came into the market uh, with uh, the Java component, now there are many developers who jumped in uh, initially uh, to use Selenium uh, in order to automate uh, their task, in order to automate their projects. Now, everyone is not from the Java background, right? There are some C Sharp developers as well. There are some Python, Ruby developers as well. So now in order to work on Selenium, since initially Selenium was supported uh, or started in Java, right? So everyone is not from the Java background, right? Everyone is not familiar with Java. So if, if let's say I'm coming from a C-sharp background, I need to learn Java in order to work on Selenium. Similarly, if I'm coming from Ruby by background, then again, I need to learn Java. So what they have done is they have migrated the entire source code from Java to C-sharp and to Ruby and to Python and to all different languages, right? So this is what multi-language support is there. That Selenium is available in all major languages. So no matter whichever background that you're coming from, if you're coming from Python, there is no need to learn Java. You can simply start with Selenium with Python. If you're coming uh, from a Ruby background, no need to learn Java. You can start Selenium with Ruby. You can start Selenium with C Sharp. So that is what multi-language support is there, right? So if I talk about uh, Java, Selenium is available in a form of a jar file in Java. Since, uh, and again, if I talk about uh, C Sharp, so in C Sharp, Selenium is available in a form of a DLL file. If I talk about Ruby, Selenium is available in a form of a gem file. Same way Python, PHP, JavaScript, for all major languages, uh, the bindings of Selenium is there, right? But the major thing about Selenium is that it is not a tool. Yes, Selenium is not a tool. So if Selenium is not a tool, then what exactly is Selenium? We can call Selenium as uh, a framework. We can call Selenium as set of libraries, a project, or we can also call it as an API. Yes, Selenium is also called as an API. Now, when I'm talking about API, don't just relate it with REST APIs or SOAP APIs. API, it's a huge term. 
Now, what exactly is an EPI? Right, before we get started with Selenium, the very first thing that we need to understand is what exactly is an API. Right, because Selenium itself is an API. So, in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about what is an API. Right, and then we're going to see how Selenium is actually built and how we're going to use Selenium in our automation project. Right? Thank you.